Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday morning trading room. Just a moment. We'll get everything running here. So it seems like uh, I'm still having a few technical difficulties. What I did was I rolled over into the June contract this morning. And I've tried to reset my charts a couple of times, but you can see I still got these rather odd looking bars printing right here. Uh, very uncharacteristic for a mean Renko bar to look like that. But we'll just let it go here for a little while. I've tried to reboot it to see if that would solve the problem, but no, not yet. <laughs> so we'll just leave it alone for now. We'll let a few bars build. Ah, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Ray's asking, have you looked at the log menu of your... Ninja Trader? This is what it looks like. The tab is here at the bottom. Not sure what to do with that though. Stop it. <clears throat> yeah, Ray says there's no errors. I don't see any errors uh, printing either. It's. It looks like the market opened. Uh, very briskly here this morning and I don't know it, it was just too much data coming in or or whatever it should print normally here after a few bars I'm not normally that interested in getting uh, some early trades on anyhow But it's definitely, definitely bullish here out of the gate. My goodness, look at that rally. So just take a moment here. We'll take a look at the daily. Yesterday's session, relatively quiet. That's kind of been the norm. You can see the last couple of three weeks, things very, very quiet. And I wonder if that's because traders are starting to roll over or not. We'll take a look here at the June contract. Well, if it loads, all right, well, let's put that away here for now. rally up looks like the sellers are trying to push back a bit yeah Paul I tried that Paul says try reloading your historical data so if you right click and you go down here reload all historical data that usually does the trick I'll do it again 
reloading historical data or even just rebooting your ninja very often will fix whatever ails your system, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, um, Mark, I'm with you. I'm not one for um, rolling into the next contract too early. <laughs> Mark says, I'm still trading the old contract. I'll roll over this afternoon. You really don't need to worry about it uh, for the remainder of the week. I don't know why Ninja prompts so early to roll over. The other thing uh, you can try, and I don't know if I'm going to do it right now. Uh, where is it? I think it's under here. You can try to uh, repair or reset database. Or maybe it's repair database. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> we don't want to repair it. Uh, restore workspace, what's that do? No, nope, don't want to do that. All right, here we go. We're going to reset the database. Oh, all right. No, we won't. Have to disconnect. You know, if your chart does something like this, there's no need to panic. It will... Uh, behave normally here after a little bit. I think all it is, is you can see here during the whole 636 minute, that's when the market rallied. Just a really, really big rally. And that's thrown the data off. Yeah, like Keith says, volume for the March contract is 72,000. June is just under 1,000. I don't know why Ninja prompts you to roll so early. But between the Ninja prompt annoying the heck out of me and people in the room always asking, why aren't you on the June contract yet? I roll early. We never used to, we would always trade up until the day before the contract expired. That's how long you can, you can trade the front month. There's usually plenty of liquidity. So here's a uh, a pretty good website. Come on, freaking freaking. There we go. Uh, bar chart. It's an easy uh, website to compare volumes on. except it used to be easier to use. Oh my gosh, if they don't knock it off. Uh, where are you? 
no, currencies, indices, here we are, NASDAQ. <sighs> okay, so you can see the March contract. Open interest is really what you're interested in. But yeah, look at that. June, really, really light. The open interest isn't bad. Ideally, you want to see open interest over 10,000. Volume uh, refers to how many contracts are currently traded. The June contract will follow the front month. Oh, I see. Ray says uh, Ninja8 told him that the rollover contract won't start until tomorrow, even though the expiration date is uh, the 15th. Oh, yeah, you're right. It did say March 7th, didn't it? And then you can go into your database manager under your tools menu and roll over. I'm sure... It will prompt you until you do, of course. Actually, you know what? This let's go back to March. Let's load March up. There we go. That's more better. Oh, what's going on now? What did I do? <laughs> okay, I better stop messing around with my <laughs> with my charts here. up my daily chart too there we go okay uh, 
All right, I better save this. Whew. Wow. Okay, well, that's one way to avoid doing something silly. Just muck around with your uh, your chart settings for the first 20 minutes. Yeah, Mark says it'd be a good opportunity to demonstrate the market analyzer. I haven't used it on Ninja 8. All right, well, here we go. Let's see what it does. Okay, so the market analyzer allows you to compare a couple of markets. It's under your new heading. And it's going to bring up a... Oh, boy, oh boy, I'm not happy with how that's working. Okay, it's going to bring up a window like this, and what you can do is you can compare a couple of markets. So here's the March NASDAQ, and I guess I got to go hunting for the next one. Okay, how do I get the June contract? I don't know. This was not as user friendly as it used to be, that's for sure. Can I edit right in there? Oh, all right. Don't ask me how I did that, but there there we go. Okay, so I don't really care to compare the, the prices. What I want to do is I want to edit the columns. So I right-click, go down to columns, and I'm going to get rid of the ask, the bid, and the last price. And what I want to do is I want to compare volume, daily volume. Is that the only volume? Yeah, average volume, no. Daily volume. Okay. Apply that. There we go. And so you can see the daily volume is much, much higher than the in the March contract than it is in the June contract. The discrepancy between the daily volumes you see here and what we saw on the bar chart website is the bar chart data must be delayed. But yeah, June is just too light. What you can do is you can you can save this or you can just kind of you know tuck it down off screen and then you can check it every few days and once the June volume starts to get a little bit higher 
then you can uh, transfer over into the June contract. Um, we'll do a little bit more housekeeping here while we let the market kind of settle in. Uh, Frank's asking, we're near rollover. How do you roll over on Ninja 8? There's uh, a couple of ways. If you follow, you're going to get that little warning every time you log on. There's a little link in there which you can follow. It will tell you to go here to your well, actually, what it will do is it will let me take you to the web page. I think I still have it. It's going to take you to a web page which will show you to go here to your tools menu, go to your database management, and then all your contracts will be highlighted here. And all you need to do is click the rollover button. And it will roll over all your, your contracts. I did that this morning, thinking that it was time to roll into the June contract, but it's not. Still a little early. I don't know, maybe it's because I did, just did it so often on Ninja 7 that Ninja 7 seems easier rolling over. The other way you can do it, and I'm not sure why they did it this way. I kind of find it awkward. But you can type NQ06-19 right into the window. And if you highlight the second square, you see how it says instrument link? If you select the same color, all your charts will update at the same time because you've now linked them all together. Make sure it's the second square, not the first square. The first square is an interval link, which will change everything to the same settings. I suppose that's more useful if you're looking to do um, you know, multiple markets on, say, a 15-minute chart or something. Definitely seem to have a bit of a bearish bent today. Like I said, there's no reason to panic. Um, we have until the end of next week to roll roll over, so it's I've always been mildly annoyed that Ninja prompts roll over so early. But then what doesn't annoy me nowadays? <laughs> Uh, 
All right, getting a bit of a bullish pushback. What time is it? Oh, we're almost out of opening range. This is going to be a big deal now because what has happened is we've seen this moderate move lower. We're, it looks like we're kind of near overnight lows, so maybe a bit of a sideways range. Looks like this 7140 area pushing back a couple of times. The Bollinger's already bullish. The Eagle Band itself still bearish. We are in kind of hovering between swing and scalp modes. Uh, and we're sneaking up on the hard edge. The Falcon trying to get bullish, the Hawk trying to get bullish, the Raptor sort of trying to get bullish. Again, the Bollinger's full on bullish here. Uh, we do have a couple of buy signals here. You can see we've got a couple of number two signals. If I had a, a decent second push, I might give it a go. You see, it's, to me, whenever you get the market creeping up a little bit like this, It, look, it starts to look like a bear flag, in which case I halfway expect the market to break down lower. And if we get that second push opportunity, this reaction now to the hard edge, then that gives me a place where I can say, all right, there's a reaction, there's the hard edge. It's essentially a second push here now on the, on the Falcon signal. So what I've done is I'm looking to buy above there. I'm going to pull my exit order out of the way. So here's the trend chain signal on the Falcon. This is now my second push opportunity. And we can draw a little bit of a trend line like so. And if we come back from this now with a, a signal to sell, that will be a hard edge bounce. That's going to be our number three signal. So there's a couple of ways this can go. So if I get the number three signal now, I'll look to short. Otherwise, I'm going to take that Falcon buy signal, which is a second push again off the number two signal. Well, there we go. They brought us in. I can bring my stops up a little bit to their original placement. Let's see what the buyers got.
There you go. Come on. Once we get up here closer to the primary resistance zone, I'm going to get a little quicker with my stops. I could roll a little bit more. Kind of using the ATR as a bit of a guide. The last swings. Come on. Well, they seem to be holding the trend line pretty well. So this resistance zone at 71.59 looking like it's going to be little problematic and I don't know if the buyers don't pick it up here you can see the Bollinger is already getting fairly neutral no it's not looking not looking good. <clears throat> All right. So let's cancel out the other order. Make sure you close out those open orders. All right, the market does not want to go up. What do you think? Uh, is it going to want to go down, or is it just going to continue to drift sideways? We are producing a green bar sell off of the hard edge here on the Eagle. And this can also be interpreted as a hard edge bounce on the Raptor. but I may wait for a solid second push opportunity before I try something again.
things a little bit slow here at the moment. The market kind of getting itself in a bit of a twist. All right, we're coming back now with a, I'm going to throw the order in here and then I'll explain it. All right, there's my sell order now. So we're kind of flip-flopping here on our number one signal. So we got the number one signal to sell, which is essentially the same as the hard edge bounce. Then we came right back with a number one signal to buy. Now this is one of these early number one signals. This is, the proper number one signal is going to develop here when and if the uh, the market continues higher. The clouds will come into sync. There's going to be a little bit of a pullback, and then prices are going to continue higher. That's the elements of a number one signal. The clouds cross, they change direction, there's a pullback, and then the signal parameters are met, and you produce a number one signal. Ideally, you want to see your number one signal produce shortly after the clouds cross. The number one signals where the clouds take, or the signal takes a long time to produce after the clouds cross can be a little problematic. Now, the easy way around that problem is just to use the second push strategy to get in. But uh, what you can also do is you can anticipate the clouds crossing. Right, so we're looking here, we're looking for the clouds to start to cross. It's essentially a number one signal in the making, this one right here. And don't be worried if you don't spot those right off. You will. As you use your tools more, you'll see them. And I do believe... Oh, yeah, here we go. We got a little bit of a rule of three signal going on here with the eagle. We only had two counter trend signals, but it's still the same idea. I guess I should throw a profit order in. We'll go up here to the, maybe to the next support and resistance zone. Or, you know what, maybe I won't make it work quite that hard. We'll just take our high probability profit when we have it. Still, look at all that pushback from 71.59, that primary resistance zone.
Oh, I thought for sure we were going to see them push through on that bar right here and then just got smacked again. You can see the importance of leaving your stop uh, proper distance away. So ideally two swings back. Now that we have the second swing, swing number one, swing number two. Wow, they will not let go. Come on, get over 71.59 already. No, not looking very good here. Okay, next bullish bar. I'm going to start to roll stops. Come on. One more. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, you bulls. Where'd you go? All right. So. Now I'm using the two swing concept, uh, treating this as a double bottom. It really is do or die for the buyers at this point. They got to hold these lows here at Wow, still getting knocked down. Yeah, it's not looking very promising. 
We're kind of stuck in a bit of a sideways range here at the moment. All right. Well, they didn't want to go up, and it doesn't seem as though they want to go down. That would suggest that the market in a bit of a sideways trading range. Not quite sure how I'm going to group it just yet, but at the very least, it's like that. When and if we get a breakout, it should give us some sort of direction. But in the meantime, everything else is going to be a little bit of a crapshoot. Hmm. All right. Well, the seller's stepping up here now. We've produced a number one signal here on the Raptor. First micro macro cross on the Hawk. Still working this number one signal. All right. Am I going to get, are they going to give me a second push opportunity on that or are they going to run away? All right. I'm going to anticipate this to be my second push. It's just a teeny tiny little pushback right now. Take my exit order out of the way. All right. Okay, now we got a little giddy up.
Let's see if we can get two zones out of this. Uh, typically what happens when the market moves, I, and certainly once it breaks the primary support zone, the next target should be the next support zone down here at 71.20. Should in italics. <laughs> okay, well, we've certainly hit our high probability profit objective. I'm trying to nurse a couple more ticks out of this. Okay, there's that reaction now to the primary support zone. But I think the day has now taken on a little bit more of a bearish flavor. Oh, come on. They started so well. Come on. You know there's some buying going on here. You can just tell. If we can get below that low, that 71.33 zone, I think there's a good chance they're going to make a run around the 71.20 area.
Come on, sellers. Okay, next bearish attempt here. I'm going to roll my stops. I will not be happy if uh, if they push back all the way here to my entry point. You can roll it up a couple of ticks. All right, nice little number three signal. Oh, <laughs> still bouncing off of the uh, support zone. I'm doing my very best to be patient.
There we go. Come on, get down there. You can do it. <laughs> or, or not. <laughs> Well, the Bollingers are in sync again. That's nice to see. All right, I'm going to start locking in some of this profit. So what I'm doing here is I'm leaving my stop a couple of bars back and as we get closer here I'm going to squeeze it even more. Great. Hooray. Whew. That was tough work. The hardest part of that was staying out of my own way. And a little bit of patience going a long way on that one. Here you can see very plainly, actually I should have looked back on, on this as it was developing. You can see a nice breakout and retest and with trend signal. Nicely played out here on the eagle. Hooray for us. Wow. Okay. Made it all the way down to the secondary support zone, 7123 quarters.
Okay, a little bit of a bounce back. Uh, rather slow trading again. Again, a little bit of a pushback, almost resembling a bit of a bear flag, given the larger move down. Now we get that little consolidation period going on. I don't know if I'm all that anxious to buy. Now we've broken the bearish trend line, which should result in a little bit of a bearish pushback if anything although we do have a trend change signal and a late filter entry and the bollingers are in sync so the falcon definitely be looking a touch bullish at this point and the raptor now coming through with a soft edge buy Well, they're inching higher. I don't know. I'm, I'm not convinced that uh, the sellers are out of it. 
I'm not sure what they're waiting on. Ho oh, hum. <laughs> Isn't trading exciting? This is when I should uh, break out the joke book.
and the pullback continues all right we're into the hard edge and uh, we've got the possible hard edge bounce a green bar sell here on the eagle uh, right now however the well the falcon creeping higher off of that earlier late filter entry signal I don't know if there's anything I really want to try to do here. Yeah, Ray is asking about uh, syncing up your charts. Which of these boxes do I use? You do not want the interval link. What that does is it converts everything to the same time frame or uh, chart size. I suppose they included the interval link if you're watching multiple markets, as many people are prone to do. So you can see them all like on a 15 minute time frame or a, an eight tick mean Renko or whatever the case. No, what you want is you want the instrument link. You want to link all your charts to be the same instrument. You want them all to show the same NASDAQ. Yeah, the interval link is just going to mess up your, well, it's going to make all your charts the same is what it's going to do. Well, you know, I'm not sure we're going to get any other good opportunities here today. We've kind of hit this slow sideways grind. Uh, the fact that they're hesitating going lower off of this hard edge bounce does open up the possibility that the market will try to rally a little higher.
All right. You know what? I think we're just going to button up shop here for the morning. Um, you can see we're starting to get a lot of candy striping going on, a lot of alternating bars here at the Hawk, a lot of yellow bars starting to crop up. I think, you know, you have to recognize when you have your opportunities and, and when you don't. And I think right now is probably one of those we don't times. Oh, are they going to make a little push to the upside? Nope. <laughs> Just when you thought maybe they were going to go. All right, gang. Uh, I will see you again tomorrow if you're uh, hanging on here today. Uh, do be careful. It's kind of a really quiet crazy kind of day your better opportunities will still be on the short side i think we do have a bit of a bear trend see you tomorrow bye for now oh frank's asking is there a possible sell in the eagle yes i would probably draw a trend line along here though frank and i would consider a second push below here but Given how quiet everything is at the moment, um, you may want to be quick on your profit target as well. All right, gang. See you in the morning. Bye for now.